<laughs> it's a real tough ask. I mean, look, it's, it's only ever been done once, I believe, in this country by Man United, and that was 20 years ago. And it's hard enough just winning the Champions League. The Champions League is a funny old competition um, because you've got a lot of decent sides in there. And as you guys proved to us um, last season, it can just take one moment and the tie could effectively be totally transformed. I mean, it, it could take just uh, missing one penalty, um, a handball that's not been given that leads to a goal or um, a VAR decision on a very close uh, offside decision that goes against you. And in the last minute of the game, you could be out. You could be out of the competition. So it's very, very difficult to win that Champions League. It's a cup competition. And as I said, anything can happen on the day. The Premier League, on the other hand, you've got to be consistently good for nine or ten months. Yeah, You can get away with the odd bad results or even two. And last season, we lost four league games. Liverpool only lost one. But overall, over the whole season, we were a lot more consistent than they were in winning games. Um, can we win them both? Look, we've got the best team I think we've ever had. We've got the best squad that we've ever had. But even with all that, it's still very, very difficult to win both. Can we win them both? Yeah, I think we can. Will we win them both? I'm not so sure, you know. Uh, I'll still take the Premier League every day of the week. It's bread and butter. It's what most genuine, long-term City fans want to win. It's the Premier League. Um, fingers crossed we will go one further and win them both. But to be honest, uh, I, I see our chances as uh, less than 50-50. Well, we had a few spots that we needed uh, addressing. Uh, we all obviously had a problem at left back with Ben Mendy, a fabulous uh, talent that he is, but he's basically been injured for, for two seasons, for the two seasons he's been at City. He's played, I can't remember, is it 17 games for us in two seasons? And no matter how good you are, you know, you're not going to get anywhere in our team, especially if you can't stay fit. And this probably is his last season to get fit and stay fit and to prove how good he really is. So we needed some backup there. We, we knew Fabian Delph was going. We had Zinchenko, who's a converted midfielder, converted attacking midfielder into a left back. We needed some cover at least for him and that we got with Angelino. So quite happy to bring a kid back that uh, was with us for four years, albeit mostly on loan, um, to bring an ex-player back. And he's, he's, he's going to be covered this season. So that's a position we needed to, to strengthen, and we've done that. Defensive midfield or holding midfield, yep, Fernandinho is, what, 34 years old? And in a pure defensive midfield role, um, we didn't have proper cover. I mean, Ilke Gundogan uh, is more... Of, I put him as a half-and-half half sometimes. He, he's an attacking midfielder who can play the half-and-half half role, half defensive, half attacking. But... When you need someone in certain games, the games can pass him by. He's not fast enough to do that defensive midfield role, in my opinion. And bringing Rodri in, uh, I think it's fantastic business. Yes, I'll get onto it later on with one of your other questions. I did like Tongi on Dumbele. I did really, really want him for many, many months. But looking at Rodri so far, um, he's got uh, composure, he's um, poised and calmness. Um, he's got to get up to speed with the Premier League and what's uh, required. Uh, we saw that against West Ham. He got, I think, dispossessed once or twice and a, a couple of tough moments. Um, but really happy with what we've got. A young player, early 20s, could be with us for eight, nine, ten years at the top level. Pep singing his praises. But hey, <laughs> Pep sings the praises of all, all our players. I mean, apparently, um, Phil Foden's the best player he's ever seen. So you know, sometimes you take it with... Uh, it's a bit of hyperbole, take it with a pinch of salt. But you know, if we're getting players, then they now I think our system is they're very good players. There's no more mangalas that we you know we bought five years ago and didn't work out. It's generally players who are going to work out for City. Um, what else did we need? We needed with Danilo looking like he was going to go because he, I think he'd only started 22 games, 22 league games in two years. He wanted more game time. We needed some more cover or. Rather than cover, we needed someone to challenge Walker at right back. Now, Walker, even though he's probably one of the three best three right backs in, in the Premier League, he needs someone to challenge him. He does make mistakes without pressure of a, a, a capable deputy. Um, I think he, he's, he, his standards can slip. So, Cancelo coming in, I think, is a wonderful piece of business. He does look exciting. I'm not sure how well he can defend, but going forward, he looks the business and that's what City are about. It's about going forward and scoring goals. We thought we might 
we could do with somebody at centre back with Vincent Company leaving. But my feeling has been for a long time that Otamendi can make up some uh, more games and we'll have other people coming in. Fernandini will play some games at centre back. We've got a couple of kids coming through in Eric Garcia, who looks a wonderful talent talent and Taylor Howard Bellis who performed uh, admirably on our pre-season tour so all in all I'm really happy with the business we've done in the summer N you know there's no position that I'm currently looking at and saying we desperately need somebody there's all positions you think we could we could do with another striker or we could do with another centre back but look I've already said we've got I think the best team we've ever had the best squad we've ever had so I've got to be very happy with the business we did in the summer. Thanks for reminding me guys, uh, I knew you would, um, that Champions League game still, it kind of haunts us a little bit because um, you know I'm, I'm still gutted by the first leg performance and um, the team we put out and Aguero not scoring that penalty, Delft making the mistake to let uh, Son get the goal um, and then obviously the 4-3 in Manchester was a phenomenal game. You know, and it's funny. A lot of City fans come out. We lost the game, but we were thoroughly pleased because it was such an entertaining uh, and fabulous game of football. But do I see you as more of a threat from just from that game? No, I don't. Uh, you you will challenge. There's no question about about that. I mean, you challenged last season, halfway through the season, you were just two points behind City, um, and then suddenly you slipped away and you finished somewhere like 25, 27 points behind at the end of the season. But I think you'll challenge more. Uh, you've got some good uh, players in. You've already got some very good players who are developing and uh, under Poch and de just developing naturally uh, their own um, development from from being younger to older players and having more experience. So I think you will be more of a threat. Uh, I don't think you'll win the uh, Premier League, uh, not at all. Um, can I say not in the slightest? But I think you'll be closer than you were last season. You should, in my opinion, be within. 10 or 12 points of City this time rather than 27 points behind. I think, you know, if you can get it within 10 points, that should be a pretty, pretty good season for you guys. Well, um, I think you've got four main players. Uh, I think you've got that Jack, was it Jack Clark, who's uh, probably, has he gone back to, to Leeds on loan? So he's one for the future. You've got that Spanish player on loan from, was it Barca? I can't say his surname, so I'll just call him Giovanni. Don't really know anything about him, so I, I can't honestly comment. You've got um, Tongu Nobili. Now, I've said many times that he's a player I really, really like last season. City were in for him the season before, the summer before. Leon wouldn't sell uh, for about, I think it's about 40 million euros or 40 million quid. But he's a, he's a talent. He's, I think he's still only 22 years old. And I do really, really rate him. I do really, really like him. And obviously, he started um, like a house on fire. I didn't watch the full game um, of yours against Villa. I just saw the goals and some highlights. And uh, he, he looked everything, especially, you know, that, that goal that I thought he might be. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to watch a full game uh, live, watching him play again. Uh, he, he will be of particular interest to me. So I think you've got a gem uh, in Tongan Nambele. I think he's going to do very well for you. I think he's going to light the Premier League up this season alone. So um, very, very good business. It's cost you a lot of money. You spent over 100 million quid uh, this summer. But I think he's worth every single penny. The other main signing you've got is Cessignon. And, and I'm looking at him as, um, you know, will he do better this season in a better team with Spurs than he was obviously with Fulham, who got relegated? Um, I'm not sure how good he is. You know, he, I'm, I'm kind of sitting on the fence with this, with this kid. But he's young. He's got all that time in front of him uh, to develop and to learn. Uh, he's got a good manager, so I think he will do that. Uh, I think his time will come. Um, and I think he'll be good in maybe two or three seasons time. We'll see how good he really is. But he's got a lot of potential. Uh, he was a player a couple of years ago when he, when he was 17, I think. Um, I was interested, I think City, obviously look at all um, decent young players, wherever they're from, especially English ones. So I think you've done pretty well this summer. You've got um, good players in, in positions you need. You let Trippier go. Uh, which is a shame because I, <laughs> a lot of Tottenham fans were telling me he's um, better than Kyle Walker when Kyle Walker left. But I think overall your business is good. Uh, you got a little bit of money in for Trippier. You, you spent uh, plenty of money um, on, on um, three or four players. Um, so hopefully for you guys, your stadium is starting to pay off your investment in the stadium because you're spending decent money. I think you had to as well. I think how would uh, you know, Pochettino 
have felt if you hadn't spent any money again this summer, uh, I think you'd have been trading on thin ice. You know, this, this two positions that may come up uh, some at some point in this season at, uh, in Manchester, not at our place, and in uh, Madrid, and two vacancies that might come up this uh, this season. So I think you had to spend the money, and I think you spent it well. I think three, uh, three of the top four are quite, for me, nailed on. Um, I can't see past City, Liverpool and Spurs. And the fourth one, obviously, is a difficult uh, one to, um, to decide upon. You know, a Chelsea dropping away. I mean, we saw them struggle uh, score-wise against United. United have spent a lot of money again. Um, they had a good victory against Chelsea. And Arsenal... Um, you know they've got was it five new signings who didn't start the game against Newcastle so they've got potential to move forward then you've got other clubs who spent a bit of money who were decent last season you know West Ham well, okay we pumped them but 5-0 uh, on the opening day this, uh, opening game of the season but I think they'll do alright um, but I don't think anybody else can get into the top five Everton uh, Watford um, you know Leicester I just can't see anybody making that leap to get to the top four. So I think it's between Arsenal, United and Chelsea. And I'm going to pick probably the one you least expected. I'm going to pick Chelsea to finish fourth. I think they started well against United. They had a number of chances. Their obviously big problem is their transfer ban. That was a big, big issue. Not being able to buy a new striker, which I think they desperately need. Losing Eden Hazard, who's their main attacking threat. Injuries to people like uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and uh, Callum Hudson-Odoi. I think Kansi was out at the weekend as well. So they've got players to come back. Senior players, good players. Obviously, there's an issue with Lampard uh, because it's uh, second managerial job. He's had one season in management at Derby. Um, and it's a big, big ask at, um, at Chelsea. But I think he can steady the ship. I really do. And I think it's partly it's going to depend how quickly he can get his best team back. His best players, how quickly can before Kant is fit, uh, fully fit, and Callum Hudson Odoi and Ruben Loftus Cheek. And look, that game against United, it could so easily have gone the other way. You, you know, Chelsea could have scored first, and United could have collapsed. So uh, Chelsea in the first half showed me that they've they've got enough about them that I think they can do all right. And it's just a matter of which is going to be the best of the weakest three in between United, Chelsea, and Arsenal. And I'm going to go for Chelsea to finish fourth. You've got a few good players, you know, there's no denying that. You, you couldn't get to the Champions League final without having uh, a pretty decent uh, first team. And uh, to be, as I said earlier, two points behind City at ha around halfway of the season uh, in the Premier League. You, you've, you'd have had to have done well to do that. You can't do that with the average players, really. So who would, uh, uh, the biggest threat, I mean, actually, I think is Son Min Hung. I uh, don't believe he's playing this weekend, which is uh, good news for us. Good news as far as I'm concerned. But he's a big threat. I, I, I think he's a very dangerous player. Uh, other players, obviously Harry Kane. Uh, he's off the mark uh, for the first time in August. He's got two goals last week. Uh, I never doubted him. I had him in my fantasy team. That's how um, positively I thought about him, how much uh, confidence I had in him as a player. So he's another very dangerous player because he scores goals. Whatever you say about him, about this and that, not passing the ball to Raheem or whatever, which still annoys us in the World Cup, he scores goals. Um, so uh, he's, he's a danger. Deli Ali went on form. He's a tricky customer. Um, Ericsson, another good player when he's on form. So you've got half a dozen really good players. Tongan Dumbele, who I've mentioned. Uh, really looking forward to seeing him play. I think he's going to be fabulous for you. And in defence, you've got some robust defenders in uh, Toby and uh, Jan Vertonghen. So I think overall, you've got a pretty, pretty decent team. Um, out of all that, who's going to scare me the most for the weekend? Uh, I'll go with Harry Kane because, uh, yeah, he scores goals. Um, well, I've said this uh, for the last two seasons now. Uh, at fullback, that's where teams can get at City, I believe. Um, look, Oleg Sinchenko, he's an attacking midfielder who's playing fullback. And you can see that positionally he makes mistakes. Pre you know, pretty much every single game he plays, he makes one glaring error. Fortunately for him, most of the time they don't lead to goals, uh, but sometimes they do. So you see on pre in pre-season, and I've seen it 
uh, I think against Liverpool once in the Community Shield, where a ball will be hit, it's a diagonal ball. So a diagonal ball going over his head, and sometimes he's woefully out of position. He'll jump up to head it, and he'll miss it by miles. Um, and he sometimes doesn't keep an eye on the right winger, where he's going, yeah, and uh, how he's attacking. And that, I think, is the, the biggest weakness in our team is, is um, with Zinchenko. Walker, I think Walker makes mistakes as well. He has a, this problem with the lack of concentration from time to time, but he gets away with it because he's got his power, he's got his pace, he's got his strength and determination. Um, and I, we, we saw with Concello's arrival that Walker stepped up a gear against West Ham. He played a lot better than he would normally offensively and defensively. Um, but I, I still think that's the, the biggest place you can get us, apart from uh, set pieces, is the diagonal ball um, over our fullback's head. I think it's not going to be an easy game. I don't think you give us easy games anymore. Um, I think we have a decent record against you, but you, you're not there to give us easy games. Um, I, I expect you to score. I think you've got plenty in your team to show us that you're going to score. I think we'll have a little bit too much. Um, you know, if we if we fire, then we'll have too much. Um, and you know, with VAR, I think that's probably over the season is going to help us overall. Um, I'm going to go. I'm tying up, tossing up between a two-one and a three-one uh, win to City. Um, I'll go with three-one. Three-one to City.